Well, Kasho FM is it to me, FM Cheetah. You can call me Matt. And welcome to a new series here on the channel we're calling Back to Baskics. Yes, it's a terrible, terrible word play. And what does it even mean? Well, I'm glad you asked because it's a very literal Kai show here, not quite from the Basque country, but certainly from a club with deep Basque roots. That's right, at Letico Pamplona. No, they call Osasuna, of course. We're here at Osasuna. Osasuna are in the north of uh, Navarra, or as we uh, say in Basque, Nafaroa. Uh, and Osasuna is, in fact, a Basque word meaning uh, health or good health. Osasuna are located in what uh, many people know as the city of Pamplona, the running of the bulls. In Basque, that's Irun. Uh, a Basque city. Uh, and uh, the north of Nafaroa used to be part of the Basque country, but that uh, shifted mostly politically, to be honest. So if you go to the north, if you go to uh, to Erun, to Pamplona, if you go and see Osasuna, uh, you'll see a lot of people in here, more important, hear a lot of people speaking Uskara, uh not speaking Castellano or Spanish. So back to Basques is about taking a club like Osasuna and taking them back to their Basque roots. Now there are Basque players here as we'll see uh, and my job here is to look at the old Real Sociedad model. Now that model has gone away. The old Real Sociedad model was to have Basque players mostly produced from their academy uh, and then international players so non-Spanish players. Now that changed in I'm going to say uh, the, the 90s. I can't remember the exact date because they're not my club. Uh, when they started to allow Spanish players in, that is players that didn't either come through their academy or were born in the Basque country, Uskalaria. Now, the reason for that was quite simple. It was that allow themselves to sign better players because there's one club who dominates the Basque country who has a Basque only policy, and that's of course Athletic Club de Bilbao. So, and Sociedad just couldn't compete with them. And we can't either, but we can go back to Basques and ha run a club that is either Basque or international. So no Spanish only citizens. Now you can bring people, youngsters in, you can bring them, you know, they could be French or they could be Senegalese or whatever, and you can bring them through your academy and they will qualify as Basque, just as they do in Athletic Club de Bilbao. And there is a, a decent youth system here and, and Osasuna has produced some great uh, youngsters, some of them who are still here, in fact. So we're going to be relying on that academy uh, because we certainly don't have the Athletic Club de Bilbao's spending power. And we're going to be relying on internationals. Now, it needs to be a 50-50 split across the squad, across the, the 11 on the pitch and those that are on the, the subs bench. 50-50 Basque, either produced through the academy or brought in and internationals. Now, I'd like that to get better, bigger, and we need to get to that by the end of this season at the latest, and then we'll continue there, see how far we can take it. Obviously, our Youth Academy will produce people. And of course, the other thing that's obviously going to happen is this Athletic Club de Bilbao is going to come and try and steal our Bass players. So mm, we'll need to watch that, make sure we have some really good uh, buyout clauses there. And, and again, absolutely big, big focus on the Academy. Now, of course, this is a new series for the YouTube channel, but we'll also be doing this over on Twitch as well. So in between the high production videos this year on YouTube, you can come and see me cock it up on Twitch and um and ah and fiddle and cough and all that sort of thing. So please feel free to do that. Link is here on the page. Come check us out in between these and love all your feedback live. Make sure you're following me on Twitter so you know when we're going to be out there. I try and make sure I'm streaming for times that are suitable for, for the UK and for North America. But I'd love you to come and check that out while you follow the series here on YouTube. We'll be here once a week with formal videos and then we'll be over on Twitch doing the hard grind, you know, playing those in between games. Anyway, let's have a look at this club. So Osasuna was founded in 1920. Uh, Alfisra was a, a Saragotha. So of course, Saragotha are, are a, a club from uh, Nafro, Navarra for Saragothans. And we like to beat them now. Right now, they're actually in the Segunda Division, but they've got a good uh, a good squad. And we'll have a sniff around there because there will be some Basques in there, although I don't think uh, a whole lot. And I think the two I'm thinking of, they're not Basque anyway. Anyway, so the media has it at 14th. Sounds good. We'll find out what the board wants. We play at Al-Sadar, a very, very famous stadium. And we train at Tayaranar. 
great training facilities, great youth facilities, good youth recruitment, and I believe uh, good uh, youth coaching as well. No money, no money to start with. So if we're going to have any money, we're going to need to sell, and there will be players we have to sell. So according to uh, Lu Luis Sabalza, this is the starting squad. Four two three one. Uh, I can see people here who aren't uh, who are Spanish but aren't Basque, of course. There's uh, Roberto Torres, I think his name is Roberto Torres. So uh, absolutely not a Basque. He's going to need to go this season. Kiki Barria is a Basque, and so is Ruben Garcia. Moncayola is a perfect example of a young Basque here who undoubtedly Athletic Club will come and pinch. 23 years of age, probably excellent. Got some great potential ability there. We'll see if he fulfills it. We're going to need to keep an eye on him. Uh, Oya, I guarantee you, is Basque, but I know that Aradan is not Basque. Uh, he is Spanish. Now, the only question I have about Aradan Hernandez is, is he dual citizen? So here's something to consider. Uh, if he's Spanish nationality, but his second nationality is something else, that will qualify him for the squad because he's not a pure Spaniard. Because obviously a Basque is still Spanish, but he's Basque as well. Or, or, do we... Mm. So if, say, um, Aradani was uh, Spanish and, I don't know, Brazilian, that would probably qualify him as long as he was born in Brazil or in a foreign country, if he was actually born there. Now, if he was born in Spain, but his second nationality is, is uh, Brazilian or whatever, because, you know, one of his parents is Brazilian, that doesn't count. He needs to be born in that country and have Spanish nationality. Yep, we're... we're Yep, we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's here. Anyway, here's a possible starting 11. Let's see what the board want. So over the next five years, of course, work within the wage budget and a minimum three-year contracts for first-team players, and that's favoured. Okay, that's, I mean, perfectly fine. End of this uh, season, mid-table finish. Now, the media has the 14th. That's ish, that's ish mid-table, I guess. Fair enough. And fourth round of the Spanish Cup. I don't really know where that sits in terms of the quarters and the semis, but... That's the target. So as always, we have a look at the squad by potential first. Now I talked about Ion Moncayola. Uh, here he is, 23-year-old midfielder who is a Basque as well. There we go. From Tafala in uh, in the Basque country. Uh, so a proper Basque boy. Buy clause of 20 million. Expires uh, 2031. Wow, that is the weirdest thing ever. This buy clause expires at 2031. Oh my God, he's contracted till 2031 that is nuts okay great 20 mil mm, we might need to negotiate that now we talked about roberto torres he's 32 he's obviously you know fully developed here he's contracted it for uh, another year and look oh roberto is from Arunia. he is a basque there you go i had no idea about uh, torres he's never played he is a osasuna legend my apologies roberto so don't need to sell Roberto. Ruben Garcia, now I said to you before, he was a Basque. Was I wrong about that? I was wrong about that. Wow, so I got them back to front. That's probably what happened. So from uh, Jatiba here in Afaroa, uh, and so he's a player who's going to have to go. Now he has a buy clause of 10 million, so not all that much, and he's worth about that anyway. So we're going to have to offer him out for about 10 million. Hope we get a bite. He can't stay, and he's a regular starter as well. Mano Sanchez, on loan, I think, from uh, Atleti. Yeah, he's on loan, Atleti. Not a basket at all, not ours. We're not, no option to buy. He just go back home, and, and that's it. Uh, now, the other young Bas prospect is Javi Martinez. Not that Javi Martinez, but the other Javi Martinez, because there's another one. Uh, and this is him here. Uh, what is he, a deep-lying playmaker? Uh, yep, uh, defensive. He does look that way. Not the hardest work rate in the world, but he's still got some potential there. As I said, good bass laid uh, from Olbega. Uh, and, you know, these are the kind of players that are important to us. P did come through the academy? Yeah, look at this. Proper bass boys who will be playing. Is he a regular starter? He's going to be, that's for sure. Kiki Barja, who I mentioned, was a bass 24. 24-year-old 24 wing player. Can play at the left, can play on the right. As you can see, a bass man from Erun. And I'm guessing 
Yes, indeed. Look at these, all these Academy prospects. That's how important the Academy is. Anyway, let's have a look downstairs. So like all Spanish teams, there's a B squad and under 19s. This is the B squad. Um, there looks like a few outstanding here. Aymar, 19 year old Spaniard midfielder come left side of midfielder. Not too bad. And uh, a Basque, and I'm sure he's probably an academy prospect as well. That's good. Like I said, if he's an academy graduate, he's basically Basque because he that's what happens. Same as uh, Lanzama uh, with Athletic Club. If you start as a 15-year-old prospect from Thailand and you come through the academy, you're also Basque. Uh, Ica Munoz, uh, a defensive midfielder, another midfielder. Not bad. 18, pretty good. And again, of course, he will undoubtedly be Basque from Bia Pranca. And he's, of course, oh, no, look, he came from Oberena. That's interesting. Mm, okay, so good, proper Basque boy. Uh, Iban Martinez, uh, a 19-year-old goalkeeper. No idea how. He's not too bad. Online at the moment at Castellon. And I would imagine, yep, another Basque. Agreda is from. Uh, who else is there? We're, and we'll look at Jorge Hernan, Hernando. Jorge Hernando, 20. Uh, out on loan on Longrenez, which uh, tells me if he's at Longrenez, He's a Basque because there's a club that has a Basque policy. few others here. 21-year-old uh, Eneko Egia, uh, a right back. Um, yeah, okay, probably not. Uh, with a name like Eneko, uh, definitely a Basque. All right, what about the under-19s? Uh, okay, so this, there's one standout here, Christian uh, Mutilva. Don't know him at all. He's eight, 17 years old. He's pretty spectacular. He's not very... Oh, he's a centre-back. Rightio, 190. Wow, he's really, really good. Uh, obviously through the academy and we know that what that means oh, he's look at this look at this he doesn't have the stamp of basque on him my goodness but he is from Irun. Mm, mm, what does this mean this is a good question we'll have to have a chat about this in in the uh, twitch stream don't forget to join me over there at uh, fm cheater on twitch but this is interesting, and this might be interesting as well for the players coming through the academy. Will they have that Basque stamp on them? We'll find out. So a quick look at the squad by position. Lean, lean squad. So I can see a couple of goalkeepers there. Terrific. We'll have a closer look at there. See Herrero, who is our first choice. Well, a quick look at him. He is from Miranda de Ebro, which is in the Basque country. He's a Basque boy. He's been around for a little while, hasn't he? Yeah, started at Alaves, another Basque club. Um, and, and moved around a little bit there. But he's been at the club for a little while. So we've got a couple of keepers there. Uh, Ramalo was an ex-athletic club a defender from Angola. This is a classic example of a, a guy here. Uh, there he is. Born in Barcaldo, uh, but he's he declared for Angola and he's Basque. Barcaldo, very famous city uh, in the Basque country. So he's here, 28. He's been around a bit. Did, I believe, came through... Yep, came through uh, Lanzama at uh, Bilbao. Uh, and, you know, not bad. Is, is he a squad player? Probably is a squad player, actually. I'm like, yeah, he is. Una Garcia, definitely a boss. There's his, uh, there's his brother, David. I don't know if his brother probably is. It might be his brother. So we've got a, a few defenders there. We've got a couple of right backs. Uh, we've got one cruiser left back. We've got Jose Angel and Mano Sanchez. Now, Jose Angel is not Basque, nor is Mano Sanchez. Now, one cruz... I've no idea about 28 years age. He's from Madrid. So we now have three uh, three left backs, none of whom are Basque. He's from Hion, that's in Cantabria. We saw Manu Sanchez before, and of course we know that uh, Juan Cruz is from, uh, from uh, Madrid. So we need a left back pretty urgently. Uh, right backs, uh, uh, Jesus Areso is definitely a Basque. And Nacho Vidal, I'm not so sure about. No, he's not. He's not. So we've got a problem already on fullbacks. You can see what a challenge this can be. Then we've got midfield. Lucas Toro, 26 years of age. Uh, 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 he's got to go. So there's a sale there. We know about uh, Monchiola. We know about Martinez. We don't need to worry about uh, Brazenac, the Serbian, of course. Uh, we don't need to worry about Torres. We do need to move on Garcia. Barra is okay. Ezequiel Avia, the legend Chucho. He's Argentine. It really doesn't matter. Kiki Garcia, 31, is not a Basque man. He's from like Thuenca, I think, somewhere like that. There you go, he's from Thuenca. Uh, so he's got to go. He has to go, the big uh, unit. Won't be able to play him. He's probably a regular starter. He is. And Ante Budimar, the Croatian, um, if you've been over at the Conquering Clough save, he, uh, I managed the Croatian team. He was still playing at 36. We don't need to worry about Ante. 
but we've got a lot to worry about, a lot of sales to be made, and we need to find replacement for it. That's the challenge. Now we can see there's some gaps in the staffing. There's about three coaching slots open, couple of scouting slots, some recruitment slots, and some slots in the medical team. So we'll need to address those as well. Now obviously this is gonna be a very busy transfer window, but of course I wanna come back with a game. So our first game of the season is away to Villarreal. We'll definitely be coming back for the Villarreal game, that's for sure. We're gonna have a busy transfer window, a lot of outs. We're gonna to need to get some ins too. And remember, need to keep 50% Basques in that starting squad from day one. Oy, oy, oy. Anyway, I want you to stay right there. I'll go off and have this preseason transfer window. Back in a moment. And we are back for the first fixture of the season. It's going to be an away game to Birrell. Quite the challenge. But first... Let's talk transfers. So this was a lot harder than I thought. Just people not coming in for players. Lucas Toro uh, left on loan for Granada. I believe they took the option to buy for half a mil. Is that correct? No, one mil. So let's hope they pick that up. Toro, a, a really good player. Um, Granada do have the money. It's not a lot. Yeah, that's it. So he's out on loan. We don't need to worry about Lucas. Another player out on loan, Jose Angel. He has gone to Higoshi Osaka Rosa in, uh, in Japan on loan. I don't recall if he had an option to buy. No option to buy in the case of uh, this loan. Anyway, that's good. We don't have to worry about him. Uh, we will obviously need to organize a sale some point, uh, you know, in the near future but not right now. Now the sales, Juan Cruz went for 800,000 to Las Palmas. Las Palmas, great club. And hopefully Juan Cruz can you know finish his career there. Uh, Las Palmas, a, a club I was thinking about running a save around, but you know, with the Conquering Clough series, thought, you know what? No, let, let's not do that. Let's come to Osasuna. Anyway, Juan Cruz off to Las Palmas, done. Aridane Hernandez was the first player to go. In fact, he went for 3.5 to Young Boys. Uh, you know, I think a very solid defender, particularly in the Swiss League, 32 years of age. He's there for a couple of years, and who knows where he goes from there. You know, I'm going to miss that hair. I mean, that's bad hair spectacular. He's almost challenging my own hair, I think. Well, I think he's beating my hair, but anyway. And lastly, Ruben Garcia uh, to Arsenal for 7.5 million, now worth about 30. I think that's a good deal. No, it's not. Anyway, we had no choice. That's part of the deal. So he's off in, uh, I mean, I think he's a pretty good addition to the squad. He's coming as a squad player. He can come on and have an effect, I feel. Uh, solid player, but obviously, you know, not being Basque doesn't fit the criteria. Now the ins, and it was indeed Lone FC here. Just the one purchase so far anyway, starting with Roboto Lopez in from Real San Sebastian, Real Sociedad. Uh, he's a Basque, so great. He meets that criteria. Uh, he came in, the loan fee is just shy of a million, and we've got a just shy of $7 million option to buy Roboto. So if, uh, I mean, if this is true, if the coaching report is correct, uh, it would make a great addition. He will most certainly be playing uh, you know, in the hole as a creator. The only thing is the teamwork here. I mean, I don't know how you can be a, you know, a, a, a playmaker and have like teamwork below 10. What I do like about Roboto is he can play all across the width there. So he can play on the right, he can play on the left, he can play in the hole. He may spend a little bit of time out in the right. We'll talk about that in a moment. Next in for a loan fee of 1.3 million here, Lopez's Real Sociedad partner, Roboto Navarro. Uh, Roboto, uh, 19 years of age, came in from, I think, the B squad. May even be in the under-19s. Anyway, he's come in. There is an a, almost a $9 million option to buy the 19-year-old. Again, the coaches are saying, great, but of course, this is comparative. Sothia that have, of course, a wonderful youth system. Uh, not as good as athletic clubs, but anyway, it's pretty good. Uh, and look, again, left, center, uh, right, maybe not as, uh, as good as Lopez, but again, you know, it's not a big deal. But he can certainly do it, and he ticks the Basque box. So we've brought two players in who are... Basque, and we don't have to worry about it. Third loan in for 1.9 million, Francisco Conceição. Those of you who followed the Conquering Club save will remember Francisco. I don't know if this Francisco is as good as, um, uh, you know, the Francisco we had in Conquering Club, but he'll certainly do the job on the right where we needed help. Uh, in as a squad player, I mean, everyone's come in as a squad player because, you know, it, it just keeps things flexible. Uh, but I think, you know, he's, we needed help on the right. He was really, really good 
for uh, for for us in in conquering club. So hopefully he can be the same for us here in Osasuna. And the last loanee signing, and this one was a huge surprise to me, 5.5 million loan with a ridiculous option to buy, is Ugo Guillamon, who is Basque, who I had no idea. You know, I, I've watched this player for quite a bit of time uh, in FM uh, and for, never thought to think that, you know, was he Basque. In fact, he is, and he was born in San Sebastián in Donostia. Uh, so welcome, Ugo Guillamon. We do have an option to buy, 17 mil uh, if uh, if we go ahead, so it'd be nice to have 17 mil to play because he's pretty special. 21 can play from the back to the front. Will be starting in the back, I feel. Although at 182, it's not gigantic, but anyway, we'll see how we go. Welcome, Ugo. Now the single purchase we made, one million going to two million over like 40 games, is Nicholas Dyer, uh, a player I think I've signed somewhere else. The Danish, uh, while well, he's not quite a wonder kid, the Danish left back in from Michelin. Uh, we needed help at left back, uh, and he's it. And he is probably our starter at left back too. It is all about potential for Nicholas, so let's hope he fulfills what looks like very attractive potential. I'm worried about his concentration, to be honest. I don't like defenders on low concentration. You know, tackling is pretty weak. Don't worry too much about the down arrows. It's early in the season. The coach report was solid. Nothing untoward there, which is great. You know, no hates big matches, anything like that, but we'll see how that develops. Anyway, he's here. Welcome, Nicholas. Now, we do have other offers out there which have yet to be fulfilled, and you won't see them in this episode. Uh, and I'm not sure how many of them can actually come in because we may have reached our limit financially. Uh, and, and a bit of more support at, at right with Nico Serrano would be good. Leighton Clark's in midfield, maybe, maybe not, but it would help in terms of making sure Ugo stays in that central defensive role. And Oyaz Raga, the, the Bilbao midfielder, same thing. He's a bit of a creator, can do a bit of box-to-box -box stuff. It'd be nice to have more of that. So we're pretty light on at left back with Nicholas, very young, and uh, Inigo Perez, uh, quite old. Uh, nothing in the middle there, so it's going to be tight. At right back, we've made the decision. Uh, Jonas Ramalo will go to right back as a sort of wing back on defense, uh, and he will be supported by Jesus Arreso, a more attacking option. But I am concerned about those positions, and, and you know, they're important positions. Christian Multilva will be leaving out on loan because, to be honest, we don't. Uh, have a role for him. Although the more I look at the squad and see, hey, we've actually put him on there. We're, we're shy because of injuries. And the big injury before we start, Sergio Herrera has gone out. He's out for the week. But before that, Kike Barra is out for two to three months with a broken foot, suffered uh, during the Groningen game. Huge loss out on the right. Big, big loss. So Conce Sao is going to need to come in and have an automatic impact. Uh, and we obviously we've got Nabato who can move around and as can Lopez, so if that's possible. So it's pretty light on. We only have the two out and out strikers too, Anti Budimir and Ezekiel Abia. So if anything goes wrong there, we could be in a bit of trouble as well. Fingers crossed. Anyway, should we have a game? Let's have a game.